opening night Warriors Suns. We knew a day or so ago Draymond wasn't going to play. They ruled him out, but a late scratch was Bradley Beal for the Phoenix Suns. Now, the question of who is the fifth starter for both these teams arose, right? I initially assumed if Beal was playing, hey, they might roll GP2 out there just to get the defense going early, or maybe Kaminga had earned the start with his preseason performances. But with Beal out, I think Kerr was like, all right, it's the easy decision, let's start Chris Paul. But you immediately saw what I was talking about this offseason with pairing Steph and CP in the backcourt. It pushes Steph one defensive assignment up. But it wasn't just one, it was two. The matchups defensively to start the game was just just head-scratching, right? Okay, let's go over it. The Sun start Grayson Allen in Bradley Beal's spot, right? So you imagine Steph and CP are going to guard either Grayson Allen or Josh Okoge, right? Those are the two you hide Steph and CP on. Wrong. Steph starts on Devin Booker. What? What? I I just, it made no sense to me to ask him to spend that type of juice on their lead guy. And and, and here's the deal, man. I mean, a lot of talk about Clay, his contract, how it's come to a standstill. If Clay is at a point in his career where you have to hide him defensively over hiding Steph, he ain't going to get the money he, he, he wants. Right. Like that's listen, I understand if it's De'Aaron Fox or Ja Moran or someone who's like super quick and you're like, all right, that's a bad matchup for Clay. And I'm not saying Booker's an easy matchup for anyone, but Clay has to take that upon himself and say, what, what was the, the reel I dropped a couple of days ago? Hey, prioritize defense. And so to me, that was just a real bad look to start the game. And sure enough, Steph was in foul trouble throughout this game. So that 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 was just uh I didn't like the decision making and it was kind of alarming. And speaking of Clay and the contract and, you know, his mindset into the season, that's kind of, I think, the the main storyline right now, right? Well, Moses Moody has entered the chat. Moses Moody has entered the chat. Quietly, he's had a really good preseason, right? He's averaged like 15 points on 50 plus percent shooting. And it's all starting to come together for him in year three. And he and Kaminga were first off the bench for Steve Kerr last night. And what jumped out to me for Moses Moody, you're going to say, oh, he had seven points in that first quarter, right? He had a three. He had a layup, a couple deflections. But what I'm seeing defensively is you're starting to see in year three, he's familiar with the league. He's familiar with the sets and the trends of how teams do things, as well as the players and their tendencies. And so now he's anticipating, he's playing that cat and mouse game. And he did a couple of Draymond like things defensively, as far as helping, stunting, getting back, getting deflections, right? And then we we knew he was a shooter, right? He 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 came advertised as a shooter and he's shot from day one. It was the defense that was disappointing and why he initially struggled to get on the floor. But Moses Moody, again, welcome to the chat. And you could make the argument, uh, played better than Clay last night, right? And so he's knocking on the door and it looks like Kerr is willing to, you heard him say post game, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he said, hey, whoever's playing best is going to play, right? And and if he keeps that same energy, you, you get in an interesting situation here where uh, Clay in a contract season, if his minutes are getting eaten up a little bit by Moses Moody, who's coming on strong, again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but Moody was very impressive in his minutes on the floor. And I think, frankly, most of us sitting at home was like, hey, Moody should probably be playing more, right? Um, And then that brings me to the Andrew Wiggins conversation. Started off aggressive, had the and one in the post, had a bunch of early touches. Does Andrew Wiggins have the competitive stamina issue that I've brought up so many times with Anthony Davis, right? You saw Anthony Davis do it in that first game right? Where his just, his baseline of competitiveness isn't high enough and it, and it, and it dips too low at times, right? I, I was, I was clowning with my daughter. I said, you know, Wiggins, whenever he's playing hard, he, he doesn't play hard enough for himself. If that makes sense, you have to go out there and have a certain baseline of competitiveness just for your own pride. And I can tell when Wiggins is playing hard, it's, it seems like it's not for him. There's like an external source 
motivating him to play that hard, right? You know how I know? Is because whenever he does, you're like, oh, look at Wiggs. You're like, oh, look at him. Look at Wiggs aggressive. You know it's like not natural, right? And so I say all that to say, just like Moses is, uh, you know, maybe on Clay's coattails, you know what I'm finna say, Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga certainly doesn't have that issue, right? That that was what stuck out from day one with Kaminga. Even in the G League uh, with for the Ignite, it was like, oh, the boy got the juice. He got the juice. He has that competitive spirit that you can't teach. And so he closed the game last night, right? You closed the game for Andrew Wiggins, and that's what led to Kerr's comments of whoever's playing best is going to play. Again, stick with that same energy throughout the season, Kerr. I think it will serve the team well for the greater good. But you have the two vets, right, and Clay and Wiggins, you know, just not up to par opening night, and these two young guys that are hungry and ready year three. And so I think it can be a positive. I think internal competition can be a positive. Um, I'm curious, you know, how does Clay handle it if his minutes are sliced? And then I'm also curious to see if this motivates Wiggs, because like I said, he seems to be externally motivated. He doesn't just wake up hungry to compete like some of these guys, like the greats do, right? And so, you know, does Wiggins just kind of fall back and let Kaminga slowly but surely take his role? I wouldn't be surprised, right? We know Clay is going to be very forceful. Is does it does it make Clay? do the little things and 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 be a better team player or does it make clay force the issue and press knowing that moody's playing so well these these are things that are going to play out over the year but are intriguing you see it underdog fantasy code alchemy a hundred percent bonus on your first deposit up to a hundred dollars now Full transparency, I'm just having fun with some wagers in there. I'm not, you know, you don't, don't put anything on the line that you can't afford to lose, right? It's more about having fun and entertainment. And, you know, yesterday's picks, I had Steph higher than three turnovers. I assumed, hey, Steph's good for that opening night, the pace and all that. They only had 11 team turnovers, but the issue was four of them came in that fourth quarter. That's what was devastating. But I have some pickums for you tonight. I'm going to go with our old friend Jordan Poole's debut for the Washington Wizards. I'm going to go ahead and say higher than 25.5 points against the Indiana Pacers. I think it's just going to be sheer volume, right? I think he's just going to, he's probably going to put up 30 shots. And so I like the higher for Poole. And then I'm going to go Evan Mobley higher than 0.5 three-pointers made, which there's a, a bonus on that as well as far as you know, your winnings go. And I just think that Mobley, I, I assume he's taken the off season to start working on that. The opening night, you know, they may not come out to him. I, I just have a feeling he's going to knock one down. But again, just having some fun with the pickums, play alongside me or fade me. You see the code, the offensive rebounding, right? And that is a league wide trend now. You hear every team, like the analytics say, go to the offensive glass, right? And then that's why you're seeing such bad transition defense league wide as well. But does the trend of offensive rebounding lead wide, is that going to magnify our size issues? Because it felt like it did last night, right? And, you know, Steph wasn't sharp defensively, and you got Steph and CP as that backline defender. That's, that's a, a bad situation anyway. But, what I was watching was continually Steph letting a Kogi and letting Goodwin kind of slip behind him and slip in for offensive rebounds. And here's the thing. It's one thing if you're Kaminga or Wiggins to just kind of linger under the basket and stand there because, you know, they're nuclear athletes. They're long. They can explode up and snatch a rebound. If you're a 6'2 guard, a 6'3 guard, you got to put a body on somebody if you want to get in. Otherwise, you're not doing anything down there under the rim. Right, you're not going to just snatch a rebound. You got to put a body and box out. And Steph, CP, all our little guys seem to miss box outs on the offensive glass. And something that you've seen GP two do in the past is like face guard box out, and that's what they needed to do with the Kogi. The way he was hitting the glass. I'm not saying turn and put a hip on him. Go, go find him in that baseline or on that wing, and literally just face guard him from crashing the glass. You're not getting the ball. He's not getting the ball. I think that that has to be the concept with our guards as far as hitting the glass in, in defensive rebounding. And then the other issue was Nurkic and Drew Eubanks outplayed Kavon Looney and Dario Sarch last night. Can't say I saw that one coming. But what I want to point out with Looney is low-key, 
Looney starts seasons slow, if you pay attention. And he's not always in the greatest shape, I think, at the beginning of a season. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. When you look at Looney's injury history and his his body, right? Um, I think he's a guy that needs time off. You know how like Steph is like out there running sand dunes in July, right? Like there's like no days off. Looney needs days off. He needs to rest his body and then work his way into shape. And so I'm not worried about Loon long-term, but this first month of the season, if you pay attention historically, Looney, you saw him smoking a bunch of bunnies. He went back to the crab dribble, right? Get rid of the crab dribble, Loon. Just get into the body and finish. We know he's got touch with both hands. I was surprised how bad Sarch was around the rim, right? And his inability to seek contact. Eubanks is bouncy, Nurkic is big, right? And, and, and Sarch was trying to finish around them and over them. And he shoots, he's like a career 80% free throw shooter. So get to the line, get in there, seek contact, initiate the bump and get to the line. I understand Looney doesn't necessarily want to get to the line, but Sarch, if he's not going to finish above the rim or finish with great touch, seek the contact and get to the line. And I guess that was maybe the biggest positive last night. Would we win the free throw battle like 28 to 17 or something like that, right? So we we outshot them from the line. And I think it, it's no uh, coincidence. The osmosis of Chris Paul getting us in the penalty and you can see Steph just getting to the line more. I, I think that that's really going to be a thing and, what, and, and, and a part of what Chris Paul brings to the table. You also saw him kind of like steady the offense where it was like a, a offensive rebound or like a second chance opportunity where traditionally the Warriors will jack up a quick shot. And he was like, whoa, 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 let's slow down. Let's slow down and let's run something. So you saw his calming hand. And I thought that all in all, uh, he got aggressive offensively in the second half. And I like that. That's the way he has to play. He can't just be pass first all the time. And so I was encouraged um, in a vacuum with how Chris Paul looked, but big picture, there's still so many questions to how this is going to fit and how they're going to negate these size issues. And then down the stretch in those final possessions where Booker was killing us in the pick and roll action, I just thought it was a curious choice. You sit Steph after he hits the three for defensive purposes. GP2's in there. Why wouldn't you sit CP um, and put Wiggins in and just have an all defensive lineup for that final possession. I guess Kerr's thinking was, Hey, we get a stop. I need a ball handler to get out and transition. I thought that was a mistake, right? Because Vogel counters, he puts Eric Gordon in the strong side corner. And now Paul can't really tag the roll guy. It's not like he could have done anything anyway, right? With, with Nurkic rolling downhill and he ends up putting us away. The other thing is with Sarch and Loon, I think it's pretty clear just even after one game, there's going to be certain matchups where we need more athleticism and pop from the big man spot. Now, is that Trace Jackson Davis and giving him an early opportunities or is it someone that's not on the roster yet, right? And, you know, at this point, it's hard not to make Dwight the butt of jokes, but, uh, you know, and perhaps someone had suggested to me uh, on the Discord that... Um, you know, maybe the Warriors knew that this this news was coming out and they were like, yeah, we got to steer clear of that. I don't know. But I do know that we need uh, one more big athlete on this team. And we've got one open roster spot that has to be filled by November 6th. So I don't know who that is. You know that there's not a lot of names out there. Leave me in the comments if you have an idea. Uh, Jerome Earl Robinson, real ogre looking dude, but he's only like six, eight. He's a smaller big Taj Gibson got waved, but he's like 42 years old and not exactly bouncy. Right. But he does play warrior ball. I don't know who that is. And, 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 and you, you know, if we look at history, you know, who's going to fill that, that final spot, it's going to be a guard, probably Chioza or somebody. Nah, man. But, um, yeah, just a, just a mixed bag from opening night. I think that there are some things to hang your hat on getting to the foul line and the year three guys looking like they're ready to step in and contribute. And also I think Kerr's willingness, it, Kerr looks like he is going to be more dynamic this year. And he understands that he's in a spot where I think he has to be. And so I'm very interested to see how the rotation plays out moving forward. We've got the Kings in Sacramento Friday. There are no days off in this Western Conference. I do expect Draymond in uniform. As always, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.